Well, I'm Travis Johnson, pastor of Travis Johnson, uh, pastor of the Kenwood Bible Methodist Church. It's really good to be with you all today. All right, you guys have all your, you all have a handout, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about Lectio Divina. Now, how many's never heard that phrase before? So pretty much the whole, have you heard that? Okay, so pretty much the whole class. Lectio Divina. What does, what does it mean? Anybody know? <coughs> Divine lecture. Divine what? Lecture. Or lecture? No. Lesson. Mm -hmm. it means divine reading. Divine reading. Sacred reading. Lectio Divina is a very <clears throat> ancient Christian practice of communicating with God through the study of Scripture. Now, if you take a look throughout church history, you will discover several um, individuals who have who have used this spiritual discipline. John Wesley was one of them. It's a, it's a, it's a method, a spiritual discipline, if you will. And I think this class is spiritual formation, so we're certainly should always be interested in looking for things that will help us in spiritual formation. So, Lectio Divina, interestingly enough, has its origins in, in a man by the name of Origen. So that's really easy to remember. It has its origins in a man by the name of Origen, an early church father. Origen believed that the word, the logos, was incarnate in Scripture. Okay? incarnate in Scripture. And therefore, because Christ is in Scripture, the Spirit of Christ, as we read, as we meditate, as we reflect on, on the Scripture, it is Christ who is teaching us through the Scripture. His approach of Scripture was always to look for Christ. That was his major interpretive element. Look for Jesus. In the Psalms, in the Old Testament, certainly you can see him clearly in the New but even in the old, always look for Christ. After Origen, there were other church fathers who, who stressed this, who taught about it quite extensively. Ambrose, um, Augustine, uh, Hilary of Pointiere, others use this term quite often, Lectio Divina, to refer to the reading of Scripture. Now the reason why I, I'm sharing this today is just not to give you something new to learn, some so I can impress you with my Latin, because really that's the only two words in Latin I know. <laughs> so I'm not here to impress you. Simply, often for me, I'm confessing it, the biggest struggle in the Christian life often is our devotional life, right? How many would say amen to that? Amen. How many have, have never struggled in devotional life? Okay. We all, at times, have struggled. And often when we, when we have our quiet time, we look at it as having our devotions, which I really hate that term. I have to have my devotions. I've had my devotions today. It, it kind of sounds like it's, a, it's an obligation, just some sort of thing we have to do. And then when we have our devotions, we often do it in segments, right? I mean, we, we read, and then we pray. And often our reading and our praying is, is very separate, right? Am I the only one? We look at it as, as, as a segment, something I do. When I'm done with that, I do this. Often, at least for me, I stress one and ignore the other. And usually it's this that I stress and this that I ignore <coughs> because I'm a better reader than I am a prayer. Or some probably would stress this and, and, and not stress this as much. But probably it's my weakness is yours as well. And so, we read... And then we get to our prayer time, we don't know what to pray. And we feel like we're mumbling and saying the same words over again. So we just say, dear Lord, about a hundred times. And that fills a lot of space, right? <laughs> uh, dear Lord, thank you for this day, dear Lord. Uh, help my grandma, dear Lord. I have a test today, dear Lord. And so on and on we go. And we, we get done with our quiet time. And rather than feeling refreshed and blessed, often we feel guilty because we've neglected one. Okay? Or the other. But in Lectio Divina, at least as I see it, as I teach it, as I practice it, there's no separation between reading and praying. In other words, as I, as I read the Scripture, I begin to pray the Scripture. Okay? The 
prayers are already there in Scripture. Personalize it, pray as we read. The Scripture becomes our prayer. And when we begin to pray the Scriptures, we don't run out of words. And we don't run out of things to say. And often, as the Word of God, as we pray it, as we quote it, as we say it, as we read it, as we meditate on it, the Word of God has this ability to enter here and travel that long road south to our heart and then travel further still south to our feet. We begin to live out exactly what we've read. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Dr. Bird's office just a few minutes ago. I just looked down on his desk and I saw, I saw chapter 2, reading scripture. Is that for this class? This reading scripture thing? I think Dr. Brown put that together. And uh, if you ever get a chance to look at that, maybe you have already, I encourage you to do that. I would also encourage you, if you ever get the chance, take a look at prayer, uh, rather Psalms, the prayer book of the Bible by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. This book has been on my wish list for months, and uh, I was thinking it was like a 300-page book, and so I kind of put it off, and finally I ordered it, and it's a tract. I mean, it's, you know, I've seen, I've seen bigger tracts, right? <laughs> Not much to it, but it's very rich, and it will help you through the Psalms, begin to pray the Psalms and pray the Scripture. All right, Lectio Divina is an encounter. I think that's your next, your next uh, blank. An encounter with the Word of God. Now understand that Lectio Divina is not mastering the text. It's not studying so much the text. It's not, it's not exegesis or exposition. It's not mastering the languages and, and, and all this. It's simply an encounter with the Word of God. Now, exegesis and exposition is very important. And that could be a part of your spiritual formation, part of your devotions. Um, but probably for most of us, it isn't. Okay? There is a place and a time for that, especially for you guys who are going to be preachers. You better find out what the text is saying. Right? Don't preach your opinion, find out what the text, that's when you master the text. Lectio Divina is more of a devotional outlook, more of a devotional look to the Word of God. We encounter the Word of God, all right? And by the Word of God, I don't simply mean the text of Scripture. I mean the Word, Jesus, the Word of God. He who is the Word of God comes to us through the reading of the sacred scriptures. Just as the word became flesh and dwelt among us in Jesus, so in a different manner, the word becomes flesh in a sense, right? And dwells among us as we read the sacred text. Now, I don't mean by that we worship the Bible. But I do, be, I do mean by that that we value the word of God above pretty much everything else in our life, right? In fact, let me ask you this question. Let me, let me just do a little pastoral preaching here if I, if, I, if I can. As you look at the values and the goals, the ambitions in your life, where does the Word of God fall? And as you put everything in your life together, what you want to do, where you want to go, where you want to be, who you want to be with, where does the Word of God fall? Where does it rank in value? Let me tell you where it should rank. A millimeter under God with nothing above it but Him. That's how valuable the Word of God is to your life and mine. Lectio Divina is a pathway that leads us to encounter the living Word. And so I think your next, your next blank is this. Lectio Divina, the written Word, should always lead us to the living Word. It's an encounter with Christ. The living word, the written word, should always lead us to the living word. Now we're going to have some class participation here in just a moment, so just uh, just hang with me. Lectio Divina is, is a slow process. It's not rushing through the Scripture. That's why I've never been been a fan personally. It's just me speaking. I've never been been a fan of um, reading through your Bible through the year. If you want to do it, that's fine. But oftentimes. Our Bible reading just becomes something else to check off our list, and we're not slowly, um, you know, slowly reading. There's a word I like to use, it's savor. In Lectio Divina, you are savoring the Word of God. Now, yesterday, 
I went to McDonald's. I think I've only been to McDonald's two times since I moved here. And one reason is, is where we live, there's no McDonald's close. In Frankfurt, it's real close. But I went to McDonald's yesterday. I got a McRib. Mm. They're back. Wow. How many here likes McRibs? Now, I know what's in them. Mm. And I know McDonald's is trying to kill me, but I don't care. Okay? I'm going to eat them anyway. But with McDonald's, with a McRib, you've got to eat it fast. You know, you just kind of rush through. It's just a quick lunch. But last week, I took my wife to Maggiano's. Mm. Now, that's a million savor. Mm -hmm. You kind of take your time. You just kind of chew slowly. Right? Okay? In our devotional time, often we just quickly read through the scripture without ever taking time to stop and really savor and taste what Christ is saying to us through his word. Now, you can speed read through the newspaper. You can probably speed read through your collateral, too. <laughs> But you can't speed, free, speed read through the Word of God. You have to savor it. That's what Lectio Divina means.